people are talking about uh, Robert Cialdini. Robert Cialdini wrote a book uh, called um, Influence, and Influence is a book on persuasion. Uh, it is one of the best books, uh, one of the best business and skill books ever written, uh, and I can recommend it for everybody who's listening to this to read it. Uh, what Caldini talks about is how you persuade people, how you convince people to do things, what are the tricks, what are the strategies, and it turns out that most of these strategies work really well, even if you know that they're being used on you, they're that good, because we as hum humans are emotionally and behaviorally hardwired through evolution to fall for these strategies. And uh, the book is called Influence by Robert Cial Cialdini, C-I-A-L-D-I-N-I. -I -I. And the key takeaway in Cialdini is CLASS R, C-L-A-S-S-R. That's an acronym, and it stands for uh, how you persuade people. The C is consistency. People want to be consistent with their past actions. So if they did something before, then they kind of wrap that into their identity and they want to be consistent and do that kind of action again. So example, uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin used to have this trick where if he wanted someone who didn't like him, if he had an, a social enemy, he would go to them and he would ask them to borrow a book. And it was kind of awkward because especially back when he was alive, books were rare, uh, books were expensive, and books were things to be treasured. But at the same time, you always wanted to teach people. So he would say, let me borrow a book from you. And if somebody said, sure, uh, you know, he, here's the book, and they were his enemy, they'd feel a little awkward and they'd loan him the book. Then later, when he came back and returned the book and was nice to them again, they would, they would think, well, I loaned him the book in the past, therefore I, I, I wouldn't loan a book to someone I didn't like, therefore I must like him. So just to be consistent with their past action, they would like him more. So that's how consistency works. Liking is obvious, that's an L in class R, that if somebody likes you, they're more likely to be persuaded by you, so just be nice to them. Uh, a is for authority, so for example, you're more likely to listen to a doctor about medical advice than you are about a non-doctor, so that's why you have the infomercial saying, you know, recommended by X dentists or Y doctors. Um, the S, the next S is scarcity, which is, you know, there's only a few of these left, it's disappearing, grab it fast now. It's like the used car salesman saying, this is the last one I have less left in the lot. Um, the second S stands for social proof, which is monkey see, monkey do. Um, so when, uh, you know, if you see your friends doing something, then you'll do it. The simplest example of this is just go stand on the street and start looking up, and pretty soon other people around you will all be looking up. Uh, and then R is reciprocity which is people always want to repay you, and sometimes they can't do the math on what things are worth. So, for example, the Hare Krishnas in the airport will come up to you, and they'll give you, uh, you know, uh, they'll give you a, a flower, or they'll give you, like, a copy of the Bhagavad Gita, and then they'll ask for a donation. Uh, and the donation is often, like, out of proportion to what the book was worth. So that's kind of the code that Cialdini gets to his book, Class R. That's kind of what you need to remember. Uh, Scott Adams has a great blog where he goes in much more detail about more modern techniques of persuasion, including ones that uh, Trump uses, such as linguistic kill shots and assuming the sale uh, uh, and uh, you know anchoring in negotiations and so on. So I think persuasion is one of those foundational skills that everybody should learn, at least the basic theories around it. And Robert Caldini and Scott Adams' blogs are probably the two places that I would start. Let's talk about unity, which is the, the new one that you've added to the book, the seventh principle. What is it? How does it work? It works for a communicator in the following way. If that communicator can arrange for us to see him or her as one of us, that is, as someone who shares an identity with them in some mm -hmm. kind of important way, right? Like a tribal identity? It can be a tri yes, tribal identity, but it can be something. Uh, l l I'll give you an example of a, a study that was done on a college campus. Researchers asked uh, a young woman, college age woman, to stand on a heavily trafficked part of campus and ask people to donate to a good cause. I think it was the United Way. And mm -hmm. she was getting some contributions. If she said, before she made the request, one thing, right, which was, I'm a student here too, would you give the United Way 
donations went up 400%. I'm one of you. I'm, I'm like one you. of you. I'm of you. I'm not just like mm. you in style or preferences. or Those are things. No. I'm of you. Then people will say yes. And this is a superpower in error causing psychological tendency. Bias from consistency and commitment tendency, including the tendency to avoid or promptly resolve cognitive dissonance, includes the self-confirmation tendency of all conclusions, particularly expressed conclusions and with a special persistence for conclusions that are hard won. But what I'm saying here is that the human mind is a lot like the human egg, and the human egg has a shut-off device. When one sperm gets in, it shuts down so the next one can't get in. The human mind has a big tendency of the same sort. And here again, it doesn't just catch ordinary mortals, it catches the deans of physics. According to Max Planck, the really innovative, important new physics was never really accepted by the old guard. Instead, a new guard came along that was less brain blocked by its previous conclusions. And if Max Planck's crowd had this consistency and commitment tendency that kept their old conclusions intact in spite of disconfirming evidence, you can imagine what the crowd that you and I are part of behaves like. Uh, and of course, if you make a public disclosure of your conclusion, you're pounding it in to your own head. Many of these students that are screaming at us, you know, they aren't convincing us, but they're, they're forming mental chains for themselves because what they're shouting out, they're pounding in. And, uh, and I think educational institutions that create a climate where too much of that goes on are, uh, I, in a fundamental sense, they're irresponsible institutions. Uh, it's very important to not put your brain in chains too young by what you shout out. Uh, and all these things like painful qualifying and initiation rituals, and so, all those things pound in your, your commitments and your ideas. And uh, the Chinese brainwashing system, which was for war prisoners, which was way better than anybody else's, they maneuvered people into making tiny little commitments and declarations, and then they'd slowly build. That worked way better than torture.